survive day to day. Uh, financially, I, I, I begin to wonder where the hell the money did come from in those days. I didn't get into, into dope growing, and there wasn't much dope growing about in those days. Uh, the dope growing and the doll came later uh, to, to, to Maynard. Certainly the, the sort of cash crops, but um, uh, I, we, we had a little money of our own which we eked out, uh, but eventually in 74, as I say, uh, we'd been there about two years, just under two years. It seemed like a lifetime, but uh, it was only just under two years and, and uh, I, f I ended up going back to England and, and having to, to, to work there and really put my act together and, and that was the first step back into the sort of the, the commercial world of reality. Um, and I was away in England and I didn't come back until 1981. I just left the property there and we said, my wife and I, Jane and I said, we'll just leave the property there and whatever happens on it, happens on it. It still actually belonged to us, so nobody else had any title. We hadn't got the community together as such. There were various people living on it. We left Donnie with Cormac, sort of, was theoretically in charge. And in the years we were away, all sorts of people lived there. Uh, one time there were eight or nine houses on the land, and uh, some of them fell down, and some of them were taken away. And eventually we turned back up, and there were three or four, uh, there were four, I think, houses on the land, people living there. And eventually we, we formed a community. It wasn't until 1984 that the community actually officially came into being as a, as a multiple occupancy, the company structure, and uh, finally 1984, the land we bought in 72, finally made it to being a community. Still a, a totally illegal, of course, because Byron Shire Council had, <laughs> had done nothing to sort of catch up with reality in terms of all these, these people living in the hills in, in communities and, and uh, in multiple occupancies as they became known. So we lived there, we lived on illegally there until 19, or oh, I forget now, 1989, something like that. I think we were finally legalised after much uh, to and fro with council. Well, I was here up until 1974, because in 74 I went away and I went back to England and I did not come back for seven years. So I was there for those first two sort of halicon years of madness and uh, lots of building and lots of things and we built the barter shed. We built the, one of the first community things we ever did in Main Arm was to build a barter shed um, uh, where we, we stored all the co-op food in this shed and, we, uh, and I ran, organized the co-op and ran it for the first sort of six months and then we had you know, different people uh, came on board sort of running it and where we get all this whole food uh, down from uh, down from Brisbane, we get a truckload down every uh, every month and people would put in their orders and I'd order it all down, there'd be you know flour and nuts and dates and bulk buying um, the, 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 actually, if the truth, it, as some say, the origin of Santos, so that's actually where it all ended up, in a health food store in town, which eventually got taken over by, and became Santos, so that's a, that was a long way down the track. And it was very successful, it was very vibrant for, for a couple of years. The other big centre, of course, was the Finn Village, uh, again, starting up in sort of 72 people, and the, the Finn Village is a, is a story you'll get better from, from some of the other old residents of Main Arm up there, but uh, it's where there was a whole village of houses up there, and sheds and banana sheds, which everybody took over. Mainly people who, who became part of Colin Scattergar's 400 acres, and indeed they took some of the houses down the valley uh, and uh, put them up on, on Colin's land. And so, yes, there was always a willingness, something with Jean-Pierre and Damien Wilkinson and, uh, and uh, Jim Nutter and, and Helen Adams and... Uh, uh, all those people there, we'd, we'd all go and help each other. We, you know, the call went out, let's all get up there, somebody's putting a floor down or somebody needs a roof put on. We'd go and do it. Uh, it didn't happen all the time, but it certainly happened uh, from time to time. And uh, we did have a, a very cohesive sort of feeling as, as, a, as a community.